You know how you talk to that guy 10 years after you graduate high school or 20 years after you graduate high school when they got this narrative that everything was so awesome, everything was phenomenal, it was so great there. And you know because you listen to them and then you re you reconnect the dots in your mind as far as how things really were and you know that things was absolutely positively fucked up. That's how I look at y'all when y'all talk about how y'all grew up in the hood and how things was absolutely awesome. And it was so much community and people loved each other and things were great on this side of the tracks versus on that side of the track. I look at y'all and I laugh. Y'all are hilarious to me because I'm gonna be honest with you, the way that we grew up, and I'm just talking about the generation and the community and I'm not, and listen, I'm not killing your parents because they did the best that they, they could, but now we have more information and now we have more insight into how we can do things a little bit differently. And I'm telling you that we grew up fucked up. Listen, as a person that grew up in Detroit and I've had the opportunity to see multiple crackheads jumping in and out of windows as I was coming out, coming home from church or whatever like that on a Wednesday night. Because, you know, back then you had Bible study on Wednesday and then you had church on Sunday and then we had prayer meetings on Saturday and all of that. And it was a method to try to keep us out of the streets. But at the same time, they didn't know what they didn't know. And so they thought that they was teaching us the ways that we were supposed to operate when, when in reality they was teaching us how to be more poor because... You know, it did keep us out of the streets because it kept us busy, but it didn't give us what we needed in order to be successful. We had, some of us had to break out on our own and figure out what that looked like. And when I talk to people today, well, you know, I largely talk about money because I think that everything comes back to the money. And I talk to people today and I, and I try to understand why they think the way that they think and why that they think that $40,000 is enough when your parents was making twenty-five and thirty and forty thousand dollars back then, and your grandparents, and it wasn't enough back then. But for some reason, even with inflation, you think that it makes sense for us to continue to make thirty and forty thousand dollars. Like that's that's the move. That's not, that's not the move, Freaky Jason. That's not the move. I'm telling you, you're going to struggle your entire life. If you are leaning on making 30 and 40 and then trying to partner up with a chick to make 60 and $70,000 a year and not think that you poor, let me tell you why it's so important for me to tell you how poor you are when you make this, this statement. It's not because you're genuinely poor, but it's because if you think that you're poor, usually what you'll do is that you'll strive for more because you understand that the barriers to getting rich are this, right? And so you start shooting here. Because if you're here, but you really think you're here, you start operating out of desperation of getting rich. And when you start operating with a different mindset, you move differently, right? Right? You, you move with a sense of urgency, but you're not as relaxed as you are because you get content. And when you get content, you start dying because you start having conversations talking about stuff like, oh, I'm chasing happiness. No, you're chasing uh, generational curses because what's going to happen is you think that you are right and you think that you solidly middle class and you looked at some gauge or some, some litmus test that gave you this sentiment that the average person is making this. The average black man makes $47,000 a year. The average black woman makes $40,000 a year. But you're not looking at the reality of what you're facing and what you're in right now. And the thing that you're not taking into consideration is that you're in debt and you're struggling right now you are up to your nose and if you sneeze wrong and you lose your job or your mouth off to your boss a little bit too much you're going to be on the outside looking in because you only one or two paychecks away from losing everything facts the average millennial that makes over a hundred thousand dollars a year is living paycheck to paycheck and don't sit there and tell me well it's because they haven't managed their finances effectively it's because the cost of living and doing business is expensive it is super expensive. It is. <laughs> Do you understand that more than 50% of your income is going towards your living expenses, which is egregious? Join the Patreon, man. Look at the budget video. I'll break this down for you so that you can understand how you need to move more effectively. And if you need to get a personal call with me, you need to tap in because you need mentorship. You need a father figure in your life to tell you, yo, you a fuck up. 
And it's not that you a fuck up when it comes to living average, but you're living below what you're supposed to be doing, which means that you a fuck up because you could have passed that talent on to somebody else. You could have passed that work ethic and those capabilities and this opportunity to even be in this country and do what you want to do to somebody else. You had the opportunity to go into any field that you wanted to, and you decided that you wanted to party because you can do just enough in order to be successful. And so as a result, you could have passed that opportunity over to somebody else that didn't want a basket weaving degree just to say they got a degree and now they're living out here with a million dollars in debt and then they're asking Biden for forgiveness because I got some new people, some people, some people that I think are awesome that is going to be coming onto the platform and it's going to be a reality check. It's going to be a reality check. And I got my friends coming. It's going to be awesome. Over these next few weeks and these next months, you're going to see a transition within the channel. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to double down even more on the people that feel like I'm being too hard. Because what it's going to do is going to separate the weak from the fake, or I'm sorry, the strong from the real, from the people that actually want to do things differently from the people that can't or don't have the opportunities to, but just need a little bit more of a push from me in order to be successful from the people that actually when they join in the patreon they actually tap into the discord so that they align themselves with a group of people that's going in the direction that they're going in all they needed was a little bit of exposure a little bit of a push somebody like me to come along and say hey it's not okay with being in the situation that you in." and listen i got a lot of love for people i do i got a lot of love for people because i respect anybody that's doing it legally and is not cutting corners but at the same time, you don't have to settle for just being regular as fuck. You don't have to settle for just being average. You don't have to settle with taking the scraps off of somebody else's table and then having this conversation about how a one man's trash is another man's treasure. No, I want to be the one that's passing along what I feel is trash to another man for his treasure because I can. Because I should be the king. And if you don't have any expectations for yourself, I shouldn't want it more than you want it for yourself. I'm going to be real with you. The way we grew up in an environment that we were raised in is fucked up. And I decided that I even want to invest more of my money into the communities, into the cities that I came from, because I'm not going to be claiming those city as mine if I'm not having the majority of the interest in what goes on in that neighborhood, meaning that I own it. I want to own all of the properties. I want to own all of the land. I want to own all of the opportunities that come along there. That way I determine what happens there. That means that when I talk to the local, the people that represent you locally, your local elections are more important than the national elections. I can determine and I can say, hey, yes, I want this. I want that. Why don't we have a millage here? What's going on with there? Do we need a community center? Is this best? Because I can start to have conversations and have a vested interest in what goes on in the city. All y'all want to move and y'all want to run over into these different... It's a whole nother live stream. Whole nother video. A lot of people want to move and run over to these different cities thinking that they're running the greener pastures. And all they're doing is taking themselves with them. You the same person, bro. You ain't changed. You just going to make that more hood. Listen, let me get off my high horse, as y'all would say. Like I said, and I'm going to double down, triple down. The way we grew up is fucked up. The way your parents raised you is fucked up. The, the environment that you grew up in... It was drug infested. It was full of shit. It was trash. The schools that y'all went to, the teachers that had to teach y'all was over glorified babysitters because the environment in which y'all was raised in was trash. Please don't over glorify something that is not what it is because it is a false narrative and I'm tired of hearing it. And somebody at some point going to have to call it out and call it what it is so that we stop running in the victim Olympics and blaming everybody else for our problems when you got the opportunity to change it right now. And I love you in real life. And that's why I'm having these conversations with you. I'm going to holler at you later. Peace.